I'm going to talk um, CB antennas to make it easy. And I'm not going to get all high tech with you guys and, you know, and, and talk in terms that you may not understand. And not that, you know, you just, you know, well, you can't comprehend it. It's just that if you don't know it, you're not going to understand it if I use languages. That's like if I started to talk to you in another language, you're not going to know what the hell I'm talking about. So I'm going to try to keep it simple. So, let's start with the wavelength of an antenna. Let's take the ground, so we'll know that that's the ground. I think you guys can see that. Let me get some other paper. Paper, paper. Read all about it. Paper. Bright yellow paper. Paper, paper, paper. Okay, so anyway, let's take the ground. And let's put a couple mountains over here. Big mountains, little mountains. But we're going to say that there's probably a uh, hundred miles here, you know, between the mountains and things. Anyway, this is flat land. We're out in the desert. We're out in flat land. We're out in the middle of, uh, well, what's flat? Uh, Wyoming, how, um, uh, Iowa, you know, all these places. Flat land. Florida. Anyway. Antennas are rated in a few things. One is wavelength, and the other are what they call DB. You know, Delta Bravo. The letter D and the letter B. They, DBs. Wavelength, I'm just going to do a few. They have what they call a quarter wave. Then they have a half wave. Then they have a three-quarter wave and then they have a full wave so there's four now there's in there's in-betweens but believe me you're just wasting your time if you decided you wanted to go in between these they have five eighths and all this other kind of stuff but again it's just a waste of time usually your quarter wave antenna is going to have zero gain. The gain is the dB. Equal dB. Now the gain, the dB, on an antenna, uh, and again I'm speaking really, you know, uh, what's the word I can use? I'm not trying to insult you guys because I know you guys are smarter than this, but I'm really speaking, you know, like easy terms here uh, gain DB it's almost like a multiplication factor a, a amplifier so to speak if an antenna has we'll say 5 DB gain that's going to be like a multiplication factor so if you have four watts coming out of your radio, now it's, I'm not going to give you exact numbers because there's a whole formula here, but I'm just going to give you an idea. If you have four watts coming out of your radio and it comes into the antenna, which is giving you a 5 dB gain, hypothetically, you're multiplying that by five. So now you're talking the equivalent of 20 watts coming out of your antenna. You see what I mean? Now, it doesn't really work that way, but it's an, it gives you an idea as to how it works. <coughs> so, wavelength and gain have a lot to do with a good antenna. Now, also, if you have 4 watts coming out of your radio, your CB, and that's basically the law. You're lucky if there's much more than 3 watts coming out of it, because... The companies are not going to sit there and fine-tune each radio to its potential because it, it's just not going to be cost-effective. So they just throw parts in there that are going to keep it within or below, rather, the, the legal limits. As long as they're below, they don't care. Your better radios will be a little bit more, uh, a little bit closer, 
but they're never going to be right on. You're also allowed a hundred percent modulation. Modulation meaning your output audio. How loud are you to somebody else? The audio coming out of your speaker, that's different. Radios can have up to five watts. You know, you, there's no law on what you can have on that end. Uh, but there is a law on the outside. No more than four watts, no more than 100% on the audio output. Well, your radio, if you're running 100 feet of coax, by the time your four watts gets to that antenna, it may be down assuming you got four watts which you probably don't uh, you're going to be down in the neighborhood of maybe two and a half three watts you know maybe even less so that multiplication factor is going to help because if you got three watts or two watts times that now it's going to at least bring you up you know above your four watts hopefully so dbs mean a lot wavelengths mean a lot you take a radio out of the box, like I say, you're lucky if it's going to give you 3 watts. And you're lucky if it's going to give you much more than 70% on the audio output. That's all there is to it. Because like I say, the companies are not going to fine tune each radio to its fullest potential. They don't have time for that. They're just going to make them so that they fall under the limit. They keep them safe. That's why sometimes you'll take your radio to a shop, you know, a, a CB shop or a, or a ham radio operator or something like that to tune up the radio to its specs. And it, sometimes it can really help. You, you know, uh, a watt is a watt sometimes, and sometimes it isn't. Audio 70% versus 100%, well, that can help, okay? That can help. Um, you may not hear it locally, but you're going to start hearing it when you're trying to get somebody a little bit further away. Um, that's why they have power mics. It amplifies. Now, if you put a power mic on a radio that hasn't been tuned up, uh, it's going to work. But it's not going to work to its full potential because it's almost like pouring water into a funnel. If you pour it in too fast, it's just going to flow over. You know. Uh, so if you cut the bottom of the funnel out, you're going to get more flow. Well, if you go into the radio and you tune it up, uh, you know, it's going to allow more water to get through. Uh, more audio that the power mic is trying to deliver into and then out of the other side with less obstructions as possible. <clears throat> you know, so well, that's how that works. Now, it will make a difference. But, you know, it's not going to make a big difference. Well, it will make a big difference. I, I, I don't mean to confuse you here. However, it can make a great difference if the radio has been tuned up. And you'll be able to turn the mic up a little bit more because it's not going to get all distorted. It's almost like if you turn your stereo up just so loud, it gets so loud that you really can't understand it anymore because the radio goes into a distortion level. You buy a stereo, you buy a $100 stereo, and you buy a $1,000 stereo, the $1,000 stereo is going to have a lower distortion rate, which means that at the higher volumes, it's going to sound just as good and clean as if it was on a mid-sized volume or a lower volume. So you want these things to all kind of correspond. So with that being, you can always back up because I know I'm going to confuse you guys because I, I confuse myself sometimes. Now, quarter wave, zero dB. Doesn't make a difference, but when you buy an antenna, you want to check wavelength and decibel dBs. You're not going to find a super high dB gain antenna in what they call an omnidirectional. Omni meaning if the antenna's here, it's going to talk in an even or close to even 360 degrees. You'll be lucky if you get something much more than 6 or 7 dB gain. All right, and, and even though it's, you know, not so high in number, it will do a lot uh, when it comes to that antenna versus a quarter wave antenna that's not going to do a lot. So, but that's where you're at with that. That's why a lot of guys go into what they call beams, because a beam is focusing it in one direction, and it's going to give you a lot more gain 
you can get 15, 20, 25 dB gain on some of these beams. All right, and it's just blowing in one direction, you know, and, and that's what happens. But anyway, get out of that. Now, here's the ground. Here's our little house. And let's take a little antenna and put it up here. Now, let's just say that's a quarter wave antenna. Now, they make quarter wave antennas for your home. They make quarter wave ground planes. Most of the time, it's going to be, I don't want to confuse you here, but let me flip this paper. We'll have to look at two different sides for a minute here, if I can, if I can flip the paper. Okay, so we're still back to this side. <clears throat> it might be easier for you guys if I did it this way, huh? Yeah, I'll try. I'll try. Um, so where was I? I was talking about antennas. I was going to flip the paper and talk about something. But, oh, quarter wave antenna. Quarter wave antennas, as a rule, um, again, if we're looking at it alongside of a house on a pole, um, <clears throat> There you go. Matt, he's on your way. He'll be there shortly. Quarter wave antenna. Here's your mast, the pole that you're bolting it to. Quarter wave antenna usually is about nine feet tall and it has three, possibly four, nine foot radials coming off it. And they usually slope just a little bit. That gives you your quarter wavelength antenna. Because when you're buying an antenna for a house, there's no ground planes, you know, you have no vehicle, and you need that, that ground plane in order for the antenna to work properly. So, and it, and it has to kind of match. Quarter wave antenna is theoretically nine feet. A full wave would be 36 feet. Now, it's not going to be practical, 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 okay. <laughs> I bet practical for a full wave antenna to be 36 feet tall. So what they do is they start winding them, all right? They make them full wave, you know, basically electronically by, by putting a full wave worth of wire in there and they may wind it. For instance, a Francis, a big stick, not a big stick, but a Francis mobile antenna. It's uh, about seven feet tall or so, and they'll call it a three-quarter wave. Well, if you break that antenna up, you'll see that it has three individual wires in it. So they call it a three-quarter wave. You follow me? But that's how that works. So that's why it's important that if you have a mobile antenna and you're trying to make it work and I, I'm not picking on any one person here now I'm just trying to use it as an example you take a mobile antenna and you try to make it work in a house you have to substitute the car or the van in some way and you're not going to do it with little pieces of short metal or running a wire because there's more than one type of ground you have an RF ground you have your electrical ground. I mean, you know, you can go on and on and on. So there's more than one type of ground. You know, and, and you're just, you can do it because amateur radio operators, we do it all the time, but we know the theory behind it and we know what we have to do and we have the materials, we have the equipment, we have ways of doing this without blowing up our radios. Um, you know, so, but at that point, you can buy a quarter wavelength antenna for the house and it'll look something like this. It'll be nine feet high and it'll be have like three or possibly four nine foot radials. And the radials and the part that attaches to the pole or the car is isolated from the main antenna. They can't touch one another. You got to kind of figure hot and ground coming out of your house. Spark. Well, it's not going to spark, it's not going to hurt you, but it will blow up your radio. So, so that's kind of how that works. So let's get back here for a minute. Quarter wave. Quarter waves are designed to shoot high and come down short. 
So if I lived in a real mountainy area, and I was down in between the mountains here, I would want a quarter wave antenna because I needed to shoot above the mountain. You know, and I needed to be able to shoot above to get out. Now this is going in a 360 degree, so it's coming all around us at this point. But I need it to get over that mountain. If I was on top of the mountain, I wouldn't need a quarter wave. Because I'm wasting it. I'm going higher and coming down shorter. So this is where the wavelengths come in. A half wave antenna, well, this is the top of the antenna here. A half wave antenna will shoot high, but not as high as a quarter wave, but it'll go further out. Okay. A three quarter wave, same thing. Not as high as the half, but further out. Full wave, which is, is a good antenna, but uh, three-quarter wave would probably be about the best even if you did live in the desert um, full wave again is not as high but it's further out that's basically how the antennas work so you you go with the wavelength according to you know where you're at and the DB gain you always want to try to get as much as you can, okay? But uh, a lot of this is going to dictate. So that's just one of those things to where sometimes you haven't got the option to do any more with it. And that's how that all works. Now you take naturally the three-quarter. That is usually the one that most of the people go with even here in Connecticut now we've got you know mountains not compared to the uh, Kentucky and, and Tennessee and you know and all that but we got mountains but uh, again uh, none of us well there are people who live right at the base of them and you know uh, if they had to have a CB or something they would have to have uh, a quarter wave but most of us around here in Connecticut um, run the half or three quarter and three quarter seems to be the, uh, the, the basically the go to antenna uh, the Antron 99 the big stick I'm not a big believer of big stick uh, they do last forever um, I personally I like the Antron 99 it's a three piece antenna as a rule again I've been out of that for a while so I don't know but it used to be a three piece antenna fiberglass you know and away you go and the antenna even though it's 18 feet excuse me 18 feet tall and they also make I think another one 24 feet but uh, it's uh, we'll say 18 feet tall for argument's sake um, part of that antenna is actually the ground plane the ground portion of the antenna and also you know the top part is your is your actual uh, talking hot side well, the whole antenna is because you can't talk without the ground side, but that's how it is. For instance, years ago, they used to take the big stick, which is two pieces, and they would unscrew the whip from the top, and they would put in a Francis three-quarter wave that I was just talking about, and that would give them a little bit more kick on CB. You know, so there's all different ways around it. But that's kind of how antennas work. They rate in wavelength, and the wavelength determines how high, again, I'm just talking simple terms here, and the gain, the dB gain. The higher the dB gain, the better it's going to be for you. And that's kind of how it works. But, again, if you start looking at these things, you're going to find that you're not going to... Don't try to find a three-quarter wave on my directional antenna with 15 dB gain. You can look until cows grow balls and you're never going to get it so don't worry about it all right you know um there are some good antennas out there though you have your penetrators uh you know they kind of have the steel the aluminum with the aluminum uh ground plane and it's about 18 feet 24 feet then they got the sigmas they look like an upside down ice cream cone and then it stands up like 25 feet you know uh there, there's all different types of antennas uh, your metal antennas will definitely do a lot better than your fiberglass antennas 
However, there is something, you know, you have to consider sometimes, you know, what's best for you. That's like the higher the antenna, usually the better. But you don't want to put it so high that it's not practical. You put it so high, you got to run more wire. You run more coax, you may have more line loss, all right? Which means you're going to have less power getting out of it. You run it so high, now it may not be as stable, as secured as it would be if it was down an extra 10 feet. You know, and now you're going to be more acceptable to it blowing over and things. So there's these, all these little things you have to look at when you do this thing. You know, um, there's a lot involved. It really is. Uh, when you get into, CB is pretty forgiving. However, uh, it will, it will take your money. It will blow you up. <laughs> uh, and that's all there is to it. Now the SWR meter on a radio, if you buy a radio that has a built-in SWR meter, that is strictly for checking SWRs. That's going to tell you, go by the book, and it's going to tell you what the SWRs are. Some people feel that if they can turn it down, that they're actually turning their SWRs down. You're not. What they are is what they are. You have no adjustment on the radio to turn your SWRs down. There's no antenna tuner built into the radio. It's an SWR meter for checking the radio, for checking your antenna. And it, usually they're accurate enough to keep you safe. And that's how that works. And then you have what they call the field strength. Basically, you, the SWR meter has SWR forward and reverse. And then you have your field strength or S meter. And when you put it on your S meter, it'll show you uh, basically how much power you're putting out and when you talk into it it will should swing forward a little bit or kind of just stay still if it starts swinging backwards you got problems all right that's downward audio that's that's not a good thing okay um, and bad antennas can give you backward audio downward audio all right you know so these are just things that you have to know the best thing to do with anybody that's going to get into CB radio is not to start trying to physically build and and rebuild the world, all right? And you know, uh, and it's just not going to happen um, because it, it, it takes a little bit of time. I'm not saying not to do it because you can learn that way, but first get yourself an antenna up and get talking and start enjoying your radio. Buy a piece of crap radio if you want you can buy a piece of crap unit then pc 33 or something or a 510 little piece of shit radio you know for 30 bucks is a refurb or something um and use that to start playing and learning how to make an antenna or experiment with your antennas i mean don't do it with your only radio because you know you you know i mean it's just one of those things Listen, I've been doing this for a long, 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 long time. I'm telling you. I've owned a business for a number of years. I made big money in my business because I was always honest with the people. I was a tech, a repair tech for another store for a few years. I've been repairing radios. I used to repair cellular phones. I mean, I've been around the block a few times. Now, do I know everything? No, <laughs> by no means. It's always a learning curve. But I'm trying to share what I do know and trying to save you guys money. Now, you take that mobile antenna that you're talking about, and I'm, I'm going to use um, Mr. John Deere for a minute. And I'm not picking on him because he's a good kid. And uh, he actually knows quite a bit. Uh, he's just not using his knowledge right now because he's he's so concentrated on one thing that he's he's not letting himself you know look around open up you know and and but he does know if he if he if he opens up a little bit he'll he'll know what he's doing um he would be a good ham operator anyway um the antenna you take an antenna i'm going to use john deere for 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 an example here because uh a lot of you guys know him and you know what he's doing he's got a whip a whip is basically 102 inches, if you add the spring to it. It's a quarter wave antenna. 
It has a 3 8 24 thread on the bottom of it that's going to screw into a spring or the mount. If you have it on a spring, the spring has a 3 8 Here's the spring. The spring will have a 3 8 24 thread on it. That's going to screw into the mount. Whatever it is, it's a 3 8 24 thread. The part that it's going to screw into is going to look something like this, and it's going to have the thread here. It's going to have another piece down here where the coax, normally the coax will screw in. Sometimes it's called a spade lug, and they just have a, a bolt up here where you put an eyelid through the power side and another eyelid off the ground um, on the shield side. But most of the time, this is what it looks like. This is threaded so that the coax can screw into it. All right, and, and this the coax is another story, but and that's how that works. Well, this bottom piece is ground, so whatever that's against, the bottom of this has to touch metal, and a good size. I'm talking, you know, uh, hypothetically speaking, picture a van and putting this through the roof of the van. That we're talking a good piece of metal. We're not talking wires here. RF grounds. You can't do it with a piece of 10 gauge wire. If I wanted to put an RF ground on my van, I was looking at an antenna that has a lift and lay mount so I could put it on the roof and if I want to go down I hit the button and it just lowers down, you know, flat so that I can like, go in parking garages and then I can hit the button and it will raise back up again. Well because of the gears and everything in that and it being fiberglass or in plastic the antenna that goes on there is what they call a self-ground plane antenna, meaning it doesn't need a vehicle. Um, but those antennas suck. I hate them. So I was going to put a regular antenna on there that needs the vehicle. Well, if I do, my SWRs are going to be sky high and I'm going to blow my radio up because there's no ground. Why well, just can't run a ground wire from the, from the lift and lay side to the to the vehicle I would have to run something about four five six inches wide by maybe four or five six inches long you know like a piece of uh, copper plating or something or a piece of tin but tins nearly not all that conductive but um, something thin so that would act as a good ground because it's an RF ground RF grounds are different no, but anyway, that's how that works. So anyway, inside this piece, this stud, there's a fiberglass washer in here. It kind of looks like this. And the stud part, the part that screws up in there, where the antenna wire screws onto, this part, has a 3 8 24 stud coming out of it like that well if you look in here right where it goes into this piece you're gonna see that it's insulated this piece and this piece are not touching one another even though they're that close to one another they're not touching one another because this is hot this is ground this has to be touching the metal of the vehicle this cannot be touching the metal of the vehicle so by taking that washer and snapping it down inside the hole Here's the hole. If we take this washer and it's made to fit right down inside the hole and it naturally it's got a hole up here that'll snap down inside there preventing this stud from touching this metal. Then your antenna will screw down into this once this all screws up together and it looks like this. Does that make sense to you? Actually let me show you one. That would make more sense. Because my drawings sometimes suck. Okay, let's see here. Here we go. Stud. No, that's a barrel. I want a stud. Stud, stud, stud. Well, here, I'll take you with me. So, excuse me, guys. I don't mean to be rushing you around here. I'm looking for a stud. Ah. There's PL259s, there's mic jacks, there's barrel connectors, power connectors, 176 reducers. There's two types of reducers. There's a 176 and a 175. They fit different types of coax. Okay, there's no stud there. Let's look up here. Oh, come on, don't tell me I haven't got any studs. 
Ah, wait a minute. Do I see one? I do. Stud. Stud. Nope, this hasn't got the washer on it. Hold on a minute. <laughs> okay, somebody stole my washer. Don't go by the color of the washer. They're black, they're white. But uh, if you're running an antenna, a whip, for instance, it's going to have one or two types of mountings. And this is the stud. This is the stud that's got the SO239 connector on the bottom so that the PL259 can attach to it. This is where the center of the coax goes into. And this is naturally where it comes out of. If this will focus. You'll see that little white piece of fiberglass in there. See it? That's isolating this from this. This is ground that's hot. All right. Not to where you're going to get shocked. I mean, it's just, you know, we're talking RF here. Now, this is that washer I was talking about. Now, if I was to drill a hole to put this through, or if I bought a mount that was already made for this, or I bought a mount that had this attached to it already, basically, this is going to be through the hole, and it would wobble a little bit, because the hole would be actually the size of the lip on this washer, if you're seeing it. Right here is a little lip. I don't know if you're seeing it or not. That lip would snap down into the hole from the top. This would slide up underneath. Now, this is connected already just by sliding up underneath is connected to the ground, the metal. But between that little piece of plastic in there, that little insulator there, and this going down on it, that's giving me separation from the from the ground side keeping that separate then you put your lock washers and, and washers down on it if it comes with them and then you tighten it down okay and you want it snug you want it tight because this is to the ground so you want to make sure underneath is always clean all right and then your antenna would screw in here or your spring and this would be on a mount that would either be on an, an angle mount, an angle bracket, what they call mirror mount sometimes, something like this. And it has a couple U-bolts, so it'll bolt to a mirror. And right here is where the hole is, and then this thing would be sitting in here, like that. And that's how you would do it the right way. And if you were to add grounds, you don't want to add them to this, you want to add them to this bracket. So you'd have to start drilling holes in the corners, all right, four corners if you want, and then you can, looking down on it, this is the center antenna, you drill holes in the four corners, and now you could put out four good nine foot long ground rods if you wanted to start doing this. Right. But uh, again, uh, there's a lot involved, you know, and, and, a, and a, you can receive off of a coat hanger, but you can't transmit off it, you know, so you can't go by what you're actually hearing. Um, no, oh, I can hear the, the weather channel. Uh, I'm not picking on anybody, but I'm just using this as a for instance. Yeah, you're going to hear the weather channel. You can hear the weather channel even if you have a coat hanger stuck in the back of the radio. Um, you know, that's, that's all there is to it. You may not hear one that's far away from you, but you're still going to hear one. Um, but you're going to find a big difference, you know, uh, on it. So you want to, if you're going to get into CB, you want to allow yourself and give yourself every possible, uh, possible um, advantage that you can get out of it uh, by, by using the right stuff and doing it the right way. And then you can always learn later as you go along uh, and start getting into it because there's a lot more involved here I'm just trying to keep it simple at this point um, you know but at that point that's where we're at so I don't think I don't know I don't have any mirror mounts here do I have any mounts here let me think what do I have I used to have a side body mount uh, 
but I don't know where that is either. The side body mounts though, to be honest with you, if you're going to go on the side of something, uh, the side body mount, it's made of plastic, I would recommend not using it because they break um, very easily. Uh, they look nice, but they break. So you have to decide, do you want to look pretty or do you want it to work? So, but okay guys, I used up enough of your time and hopefully that will help uh, explain how some antennas work and such. And um, you can always look up to see, they call them clippers uh, a lot on CB an audio clipper and usually it's either going to be a diode or a resistor inside the radio and it's going to be numbered and uh, you can find a lot of conversions on uh, on the internet uh, but pay attention you don't want to start tuning anything stay away from tuning anything by the way I was just thinking about something with the antennas and things coax also plays a big part now this is the heavy stuff uh, they make it RG8X, RG Super 8, RG8. Uh, they make all kinds of coax. The thing is, you want to make sure it's 50 ohm. That's the most important part. Now, what's with coax? Coax has a shield. The shield, you can kind of count that as being the ground if we want to look at it that way. Some coaxes have a double shield, like this one has the... The... Uh, foil uh, underneath the shield itself then the center it has the little foam uh, insulator you know then also insulates and isolates the center conductor which is multiple strands um, on this one uh, to stop them from shorting out now the shields are important as well as the connectors look at the shield as being a garden hose and you turn the water on and you got your power nozzle on it and you got good pressure so you have a good signal going out of your antenna well if we start poking holes in that hose we're going to start losing pressure well that hose look at that as being the shield and the water being the center conductor. So you want to try to stick with at least, well you're not going to find much better, but 97% shield, 92% shield, you want to kind of be in that area. Now they also make what they call hard line, where the shield part is actually a solid piece of copper. Um, but if you really look at it, the specs on it, uh, it's not worth the extra money I mean it's you know you, they use that when they run radio towers commercial towers you know big stuff uh, some big time ham operators that have some big stuff out there will run it um, but other than that most of the time most of us run just a good uh, eight but a double shield 97 percent and that's about it now, I recommend if you don't know anything about connectors, to buy the coax that you need with the connectors already installed. And if it's too long, well, just find a place to hide it. And you don't want to roll it up into a coil either. You want to zigzag it back and forth. You roll it up, you're going to change. Uh, you're actually forming almost like what they call a, um, an ugly ballon. Uh, and it may change the uh, impedance on your signal a little bit. So you don't want to just roll it up. You want to, you know, find a home for it if you can without rolling it up. You know, stick it here, stick it there, or give yourself a big, like a two or three foot roll, and then kind of like bunch it together a little bit in the middle. So you don't want that circle. Uh, but like I say, if you don't know how to put connectors on, <coughs> excuse me, you don't want to try it or attempt it. 
because you can have the best antenna and the best radio in the world and you screw up on that connector you might as well have the worst everything uh, so you know unless you really know what you're doing uh, buy your coax with the connectors already installed and you want them soldered on connectors you don't want crimp on okay you want something that's a soldered on crimp on connectors stink they are stinko so all right so like I say coax is also a, a big big thing um, but at that point uh, we're not going to get too involved with that